and the eBIM is a device which I use in my class. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you just a few tricks, nicks and tricks. Like I tell the teachers at our school also, um, nothing comes in a perfect format or we are learning every day as we go along with the e-learning and, and as we go along with the e-programs and tomorrow there's another resource that we find, the next day there's another device that comes out. So things are continuously changing. But the only way to stay ahead is when we keep on practicing or playing with a tool. Um, some of these things look sometimes so difficult, but the moment you get to play around and the moment you get to, you know, get a feel for the thing, what does this do? What does this button do? You, you sort of like start to figure it out for yourself. And I'm sure most of the colleagues, you can relate with me. There's certain things that even the learners know better how to connect and how to do than ourselves. So um, you always want to be a step ahead, you know, no, um, you want to know what you are basically doing. So today we're going to do the eBeam. Um, the eBeam is uh, we have some hardware that goes with it. I don't know. I think you all can see. Um, and some of us have been exposed to it. So I will start off by basically where we switch it on. So I've plugged in all my I've plugged in all my devices that comes with it. The dongle, the pin. We must make sure that it's charged. Um, the the, the e-beam itself, we have plugged it in, it's charged, so the next step would be to switch it on. And when we switch it on, it would give you, you basically have to press the circle, the middle button, where you calibrate. Um, calibrate is the first step into using your e-beam, whether it's in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever you use it. Um, this is basically giving you access to link your board with your pen. Right, so it's almost electronically. There's no eraser and wiping with a cloth, nothing of that. So um, it basically aligns your board with your pen. So before we need to do that calibrating, we just connect the dots. Wherever they show the dot, you move your pen. And I hope you can see this. So it's like little yellow dots and we have to make sure that we click in the middle of the dot basically to calibrate our pen. Um, there we go. I'll pin with our board. So now that it is calibrated, I can actually go and I can, I, you will you see they pop, it will pop up a little tool. Um, we call it the wheel, a coloring wheel or whatever you want to name it. But this is basically your center focus. So this is where all I used to say the magic happens. So from here, this would navigate you where to go, what to do, when to do it. Um, if you think of a PowerPoint slide, similar to that, but with a lot of lot more features. Um, so I prefer usually to click. You will see in the circle there is a little mouse, um, uh, like a mice, mouse icon, um, and that you can click on the various uh, drop downs that's there. That will give you access to that. There's an eraser. So when we make a mistake on the white page, there's an eraser. Then obviously we've got our, our favorite, our pin. So when we click on, when I click on the pin, um, I can choose the different colors in the center. When I click on the center, um, it gives me a color wheel. So that is basically telling me how to write with my pin. So what I do in the mornings, I do this first thing because the setup can take a bit of time. But once you are all set up and you have your spot and it's connected with your um, charger and it's connected with your with your mic or whatever you need, um, you are basically all good to go. So I usually come in a little bit earlier just to set up, make sure everything is charged because um, you don't want to start off a lesson and then the pen doesn't work or the, the dongle is not in or the e-beam itself is not charged fully and so on. So we have got our color wheel um, and then basically this is where I use my pen or I'm going to show you how to use a pen for, for starters. Color wheel, you can move around. You will see I, I can drag it all the way around as I want to. Um, and when I click on the green in the middle, I will put it here again just to show you. Oh, it's clear enough. Uh, when I click in the center, basically that means I selected a pin to write with a pin. On the outer circle, it gives me the different uh, thicknesses of what I can write with. So if I want to go thin, 
again in the middle i choose a color black blue whatever it may be and then we start writing today's date or uh oh my nub falls out sorry um just hold on Miss Yankee, just a second. So far, while, yeah. while we wait for me, we have a hand from uh, Karen or Karen Mashonga. Uh, I'm not yeah, quite I'm sure sorry. if she would like to speak. She may unmute her mic and speak at the moment. If not, okay, we I'm can listening. hold the question until later. Okay. Okay, then I can go on and then. Yes, ma'am. All right. So now I've chosen my pin um, and I can write the day. Today is August. It's a normal white page that we write on the date uh, 2022, whatever your lesson might be. Right. So it's a normal page where you can write as per normal. Choosing the different colors. Uh, uh, I prefer like say, darker colors like that might, might not seem so, see so well on the board. Miss Yankee, you have a question, Melissa? Yes, ma'am. We just have a request. If you could just slow down a bit, you're going a little oh, it's fast. The... I think you're too excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought they wanted to get done and get out of no, here. No, it's too slow down. down. And so... <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I'll, I'll try to slow down the post. Thank so, you, ma'am. So um, we were busy using the pen. So when I'm I have selected my pin, my color, I'm all good to go. So today's lesson um, is reading and viewing. And basically, this, I don't know if you guys um, use books, whoever, and textbooks or worksheets, whatever you may need, you can write while they write or we write as per normal on a white page. All right. Then obviously, if I want to navigate around, because currently now it's in pin mode, so I am writing with a pin, right? Um, before I go on, uh, we can click on the eraser. So our eraser will basically take out everything that's not supposed to be there, or I can alternatively just delete the page. And the lead the page, I will show you now where to, but we need to navigate to that point because currently, like I say, it is now still in pin mode. So we're going to click on our mouse icon, you know, the little triangle thing, and that will then navigate us to the next drop down or to the next um, slide or to wherever we want to be next. Almost like a mouse, you know, clicking with a mouse somewhere else besides then change or changing then from the pin mode. So now I made a mistake, but my, oh, I'm done with this page. I'm never going to use it again. I don't need it again. I just made an example of some sort, but I, it's going to take too long to erase with an eraser. We can then just go and left hand corner on the right click across uh, there. Um, we can just go and delete this page, right? So it will ask you, are you sure? Because obviously we've written on it. There might be some pictures on here that we want to delete. So yes, we want to delete it. Um, and then obviously we are back there to a clean page, right? Okay, is there any questions with regards to using the pin or going on from the pin to, to the mouse function? No, is there nothing or shall I just continue? Yes, ma'am, you can continue. There are no questions so far. You're going at a good pace now. OK, <laughs> thank you. Okay. So next, I would like to show you um, this is the few things that I want to show you. And the rest is for you to play with at school. Um, what I like to use um, the next one would be to work on a document while your learners work on the same document, right? So if I, for instance, we did letters today, um, we worked on how to write a letter um, and you are basically teaching them that skill. So you would want to have a, a clean or a clear example on the board while they have these also in front of them. So our learners are now fortunate enough because they all have tablets that they are working on. So I maybe last night already dropped it into an into a classroom on Google Classrooms, 
I perhaps or I already dropped it into a classroom, whatever we're going to do today. So this morning as they step in, they take out the tablets, they log into the classroom and they find the worksheet already posted into the classroom, whatever it may be. If not, if we only have DBE books, for instance, or we only have the normal copy paper, normal copies, uh, Word document, nothing wrong with that. But say, for instance, we just have that. Um, we can go and we can import um, a document onto this page. So when we import a document, what, what is nice about that is that we can physically write on the document. So while guiding the learner or showing him instead of now walking around from desk to desk, yes, you will still be doing that, but in your teaching moment, you would want everybody's eyes on the board and showing them clearly how to write a letter, for instance, and that I'm going to show you now. So we're going to go to file right in the corner. You will see there is a, a file, edit, insert. So there's quite a few things to play with, just like we got used to a Word document or, or Microsoft um, Docs. We got used to that format. We're going to get used to the eBeam as well. So we're going to go to file. Remember, I changed my pin to the mouse icon, clicking mouse icon. We are not in the pin mode now, so I'm able to click onto file and then it will give me a few drop downs there and I will say import. I would like to import um, something from my desktop. So obviously I now already saved it in a folder. I already have it somewhere. And then just like a normal mouse, like I would search for a normal document, I will go and look for um, writing a letter, for instance. I will open and we will import. This little window here is basically just asking, would you like to import all the pages? Yes, no, you even have a choice. You can only do page one if you need to, or if you already save the document the way you like it, we just say, okay, import for us. So now the document or the lesson that we're going to do today, the writing the letter document, for instance, it's in a DBE book. Um, but I would like to show them how to do it, right? So here is writing a letter. You know, we all start off with a mind map. Uh, before we go on, I can actually make it a little bit bigger for you so we can zoom in. Um, and so all the learners have now access to your DBE book online or like I use it now physically on my board. They sit, sit, sit with it on their side, right? Um, I'm not sure is the high schools, do they also have DBE books? I, I don't know how that works, but I mean, it, it works perfectly, um, especially because we use the DBE, the blue books as, as our foundation on the resource, right? So, right, do we have our letter? We've imported. This is now an official document. Um, I go, I would like to be here on this page. So on the left hand side, you also have your options, which page you would like to be in on. And then I will zoom again um, a little bit bigger because we are writing letters today. Right? And remember, guys, this is all on the e-beam. I didn't go out of here. We're not in PDF. We're not in a, doc, a Word document. We are still busy with the e-beam, right? Um, my color wheel, again, the magic. Um, I'm not, I'm, I would like to write. So I'm going to go back to pen mode. I would like to write with a blue pen today. I choose my color and I am able to write or I should be able to write onto my document, right? It's a format of a letter. So our letter starts with address and all of that jazz. You know how we teach. Our number goes in front. So I can say I love in number 19, Sybil Crescent or Crest. And we do basically the letter with them, showing them step by step, but I am able to write onto my document while showing them the format of a letter. All right, the, today's date is the 16th of August. And this is actually quite nice because they see how it has to be done. So now you will basically then give it over to them. Right now you try your address and whatever it may be. Is that clear? Should I import another document or is that okay for you? 
No questions. I think you can go through that process one more time, ma'am. Okay. Just to import the uh -huh. document and then write on the document. Okay. So again, remember I was now lost in pin mode. We're switching again to mouse mode and I'm not going to need this again. So I would like to delete it, for instance. There's also an option of saving it. So you can save this document that you now wrote on. You can save it as part of your desktop, but I'm not going to go into all of that, but you can click save file save save it on your desktop so tomorrow when the other grade sevens come in you have your letter prepared you just show them again the same document that you were busy with so um we're going to file we're going to import again another document file uh we're going to say import obviously i have my documents in front of me um we're moving on to let's say conjunctions so language lesson we say import. I've got all the pages that I need that I want to import. Um, and there is my conjunctions. I would like to show them. We are talking about what it is and what that on the document. Again, I go back to my color palette and I have my pen. And maybe I would like to talk about uh, words that come out. What is a conjunction? Or today we're talking about conjunctions. I can physically go and point onto the document itself. Um, we say, but is a conjunction or whatever it may be. Further on, I move further down. Back to mouse mode because I'm pulling up my document. Right, we've got a few examples. They have that in their books. And I will do the first one with them. Right, so we read and we incorporate that we show them where the conjunction comes is joining two sentences together and i will then go on and write it as uh as a full sentence we wanted to play etc etc i'm sure everybody gets that right can we move on sure that should be clear now um okay um i think we're moving on so uh, now that we have this, we do, we can, like I said, we can go to file and then save it as, like you would save a normal document. So tomorrow you might want to need it again. We just open it up again. And again, your eBay needs to be on, connected and so on, and you can use it again. Or we are never gonna use this again. This was just an example. We just made an example to a few of them and we can delete our pages that we're not gonna use. Um, because today I actually want to be here. Uh, first period, um, we maybe have maths. So, another few tricks about the eBeam is that it has got a gallery. Um, I like to play around with a gallery because now the eBeam gives you live images or it gives you images that you can use in your document. So, for me, we teach, we teach maths. Um, you would sometimes want a learner to see the protractor or the, you, you would want him to see the physical clock to see how the, 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 minute, um, the minutes are moving. You would want them to see the cube, the sphere. Um, you would want them to see the angles of, for instance, if we do polygons or whatever it may be. So as a math teacher, or even the fractions, they have even fractions on here, guys. Like it is, it's a lovely place to be on the e-beam. <laughs> so um, I would go back again to my mouse uh, uh, tool and then I will go to gallery. Gallery, like I say, is where the magic happens. So you really need to just play around a bit with it to see what fantastic stuff they have up, up on here. Um, you can choose in your gallery different departments or different headings or different subjects. So, for instance, they've got um, geography. If I teach a geography lesson, there is a continent Africa. So I don't need to physically go and draw. And you know, as teachers, right, how our, how our drawing skills are, some of us. So um, <laughs> they physically give us the pictures already. All we need to do is basically drag it down, 
paste it onto the page. There the learners see it and we can basically do our explanation on that. So um, let's take, for instance, I clicked on ge geography for the geography people. They give us uh, the first one there is Africa. And I'm basically going to click on Africa and I'll just drag it down onto my page. What I don't need now, the rest I'll come back on later. I will just slide that up and now I can basically enlarge the continent of Africa if this is what we are going to do. So today, don't worry, I don't have a clue about geography. I don't know what to teach here. So, but if I'm a geography teacher, I would use this if we are doing Africa, the continents, the provinces, the what is where. So what is so cool about this is I've got my outline. I can go back to my tool. I can go back to my pin. And I can basically go show them this Cape Town, there's whatever, there's that, there's that, and you 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 know what I'm trying to explain. So we can even write on your uh, Western Cape or the provinces or what province would we find here, or you know you you can make your illustrations based on this. But this all came out of the gallery. And I don't physically need to go and draw the shape. Ooh. I don't physically need to go and draw it in because my gallery gives me um, images that I can work with already. OK, um, I'll insert another image that I maybe would like to use in a more practical class. So I will go back to gallery again. Um, I teach math, so I'm going to mathematics, for instance. And in the maths section, they've got a variety of things that you can play around with. So we've got from the cubes to the polygons to the number charts to the so you could use it basically for every phase, whether it is foundation phase, your intermediate or senior or FPT phase even. Um, I will just go all the way. There's our clock. So if I had to use my clock, I would just grab my clock and then just bring him down. If we're doing time, for instance, in maths, so I will do the time and I will basically I can write on here. I can show them uh, back to my pen, um, the minute and the hour, um, how many, what, what was the time now be if it's that time. And so you can erase, go back, erase and play around with time if that is what you are currently teaching. If I don't need it, I can basically go back. I will just change often my mouse and I will just say delete on my image and it basically takes out the image. I use the eraser. I don't need that now. That was just an example and I will go back because I actually want to show you what I've been using. Um, let's see, there's fractions as you go along, the percentages. So there's quite a lot of things to play around with. My personal favorite is when we use angles, when we teach angles. Um, so I have a big protractor on the board and we basically teach them angles. So our starting point is always from a 90 degree angle. And what makes it fun is I can show them the different angles based on my 90 degrees all the way down. Uh, um, if this doesn't work, then I can even make my pen a bit thicker to show them that this is the 90 degree angle down here. So you, you, you get to play around with whatever it may be. Um, anything we can change color. Uh, and we call anything smaller than 90 degrees. We call uh, acute angles, whatever it may be. And it is just lovely to use. Obviously, there's a lot of preparation that goes with this. So if you know you're teaching angles today, different angles, bigger than 90 degrees, all the way down, uh, what do we call an angle that would be stated or situated like that? What would that angle be? Um, and so on. So as long as you know what you are teaching and you know what is in your gallery, you can, the world is your oyster, like they say. <laughs> There's quite a few things that you can play around with, um, that you can just grab from your gallery, 
put it on a worksheet while you're teaching. Children's eyes are here or the learners are so focused because it's colorful. They see it physically there. You know how we sometimes keep a small protector up in class and we show them physically the protector, but some of them don't even understand what you are showing. So here on the evening, it's quite clear. It's laid out as they would use it. And it's just very transparent and interactive with the learners as well. What you can do or what I like to do is um, I can even give them homework on the sheet um, that they should draw in or that they should state for me all the angles or what. You can ask questions about this protractor when it comes to angles. And what I would do is I would save this maybe on my desktop. And then later when they leave, I would post this in the classroom. So in the mats on the Google classrooms, I would throw this in there, send a little message tonight um, for tomorrow's second period please answer the following questions stated or based on the image that that i've just posted and so on um yeah and then that is the gallery quite a few things i don't know should i show you more but there is quite a variety of things into our gallery that you can make use of the root um i don't know the, the high, high schools probably make most other things so if we just quickly scroll down and so we've got a variety of subjects we've got the creative arts people there's sport there is science so if i want to do um the heart can i just insert the clean page yeah so we are teaching biology for instance there's the heart um there is your brain i can put that in there and you can always enlarge it and sometimes I even use some of these images as part of my assessment tasks. So I, I would basically incorporate it into an assessment to can base yourself on this. If you are doing science and the brain and the, um, your medulla oblongata or whatever it may be, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's the human body, female, the features. Life skills, we know life orientation, um, different subjects. So it is, like I say, a playground and you have endless options of inserting and working with diagrams and frames and pictures and so on. Is there any questions? No, not, nothing yet. Nothing? No questions so far, ma'am. OK. I assume everybody is with us still. I hope so. If you don't <laughs> mind, you can um, move on to the spotlight and cover sheet as well. OK, that will then be the last thing and then we can just have some questions and answers. Yes. OK, so like I said. Like I said, we are not going to use this again or oh, I have saved it on my desktop. We have saved it. We are going to use it tomorrow or not. We are here. So another thing that I would like that I like to do in the using the e-beam is, for instance, in language, when we have to predict um, when we teach reading skills. So the reading skills often require learners to predict or use your own imagination or what do they think or their opinion before reading the story, actually, or before seeing um whatever it may be so again i will go to file um just going to click on my cursor so we're going to file and then again i will maybe import the story already um import um and then i have an english lesson um let's say we can take anyone right uh let's say we write yeah we're going to do a story about a little girl and she's reading and she's doing this and that. I import the story already, but say for instance, we want to teach them the skills of just um, reading. I know this is the letter page that I showed you, but let's pretend it's a story. Um, there we go. Let's pretend this is our story. And this is where we're going to read about a little girl that wrote a beautiful letter one day and she actually became famous by writing letters, right? 
But before we read the story further down, we don't want them to see the story yet because you know how they are. When you ask them, what did you think the story is about? They go ahead and they read the story and then they basically tell it to you. So we don't want that. The eBeam has got a feature called Spotlight. So when I click on the Spotlight, the, spot, the Spotlight basically hides everything else that you don't want the learner to see. So now my story is hidden and I just want them to, I just want them to look at the picture. We just want to talk about what do you see? We just want to talk about what do you observe? What do you notice? What, what is she doing? Is it a he? Is it a she? What, why do you think she's writing? You know, you want to basically get the creative thinking going before we're reading the story. So now I've chosen the spotlight option because I'm hiding all the, the, the entire story I'm hiding. And the focus basically is just around the pictures that they see, right? And now we can go ahead and do our predictions. So now we can talk and discuss and do whatever we need to. Once we're done, right. Okay, so let's read. Now we can read and see what were the predictions right? Did they guess right? Was the story about what they predicted? You know, all of that kind of things for us that's teaching language or reading and so on. Um, yeah, and then we start off with our reading. Sometimes your picture might not be a center picture like this, but you might have it across the page. So it might stretch from the first, from the right to the left. Um, then you would use your cover sheet, or I prefer using the cover sheet. So it's basically like putting up a paper on top of the story. And then I would again, if your image, depending on what your image look like, if your image is all there right across, I usually prefer using the cover sheet. Again, it's just like putting a page on top of the story, um, hiding the story that they are not able to see what we don't want them to see yet. The same with if they write the test and they only need to write their name, surname and date. You don't want them to see the test yet, but you want them to write down your name, your surname and your date, whatever it may be. And later on, when we are done, we basically bring it all the way down until we don't need them or question number one only. Right, is everybody done? Question number two, move it a little bit down. Everybody done? Question number three, and so on and so on. Um, that is actually also one of the favorites that we are currently using.